Hey, thanks for joining me, everyone. This guy I really want to talk to tonight about. I've read his book probably half a dozen times. Back and forth, back and forth. I mean, I've read every word of his book. And I love his book. I love his energy. I love everything about this guy. Because he gets entrepreneurship 100%. He just gets it because he's lived it. And I, I first discovered Mr. Steven Schwartzman many years ago. He wrote a book. I'll drop it here. It's called What It Takes by Steven Schwartzman. Anyways, Mr. Schwartzman is the founder, co-founder of Blackstone. And here's the thing about Mr. Schwartzman. The guy is just... He's a genuine gentleman. And on top of that, the guy is a complete and utter beast in business. The, look, I'm going to give you some lessons from his book that's really kept hope alive in me. I've been, for the last couple of years, I've been just devouring and studying corporate finance, mergers and acquisitions, investment funds. I mean, I'm literally need a sponsor, but I've been trying to qualify for the Series 7 uh, SEC FINRA NAS exam. And I've been studying very, very uh, hardcore for the Series 65 Investment Advisors exam. Now, on the investment fund side, I've been devouring everything I can about private placement memorandums on how, you know, not only to fundraise, but build investment funds and how they work. How do you do your targeting? What industry you're going to target? What's your niche going to be? I mean, all these questions I've worked out and I've been blogging about, not only blogging, but writing about, you know, everything under the sun in corporate finance in my blog, geniusandsharp.com. And this book by Mr. Schwartzman really focuses and brings, and it really lifted the curtain for me on investment committees themselves. So thank you very much, Mr. Schwartzman. And I, it, president underneath uh, Stephen Schwartzman is uh, now in charge of Blackstone. His name's John Gray. Great guy, funny. If you've seen their videos, they did this video where they had a mascot for Blackstone and it was based, uh, the, 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 the structure of uh, the video is kind of like uh, the TV show, The Office. It was just hilarious. Anyways, John Gray, great guy. I follow his career too in real estate and real estate funds as well. I've had to become an expert in the field, get in the weeds, look at corporate structuring, look at advanced accounting. I had to learn all this stuff. It's very bland, boring stuff to most people. But to me, it's fascinating. I go to town on this. This stuff is like, I'm a monster with it. I'm like, I need to know more. I mean, it really is. Anyways, pulling the curtain back on investment committees but you know, privilege and honor to join their team over at Blackstone, it really was. And I've been doing everything I can in my, in my power to get their attention. And I'm just not gonna stop until I get it. There's, there's a chapter in Mr. Schwartzman's book called Call and Keep Calling. He gives you specific directions and instructions on how to make an impact as an entrepreneur and get things done and persevere. Like lesson number one, and uh, it's often going to take longer than you ever expected to reach your goals. It really is. Realize your purpose and go after it. You'll thank me later. I promise you. Look, there's no straight line to success. All right, I've got a hell of a story that involves billionaires in my personal life. Partner with me. I had billionaires and call me and become my friends. Why? Because I put their needs first and I took an interest in them. I'll do a separate piece about that, but be a value for people, volunteer. Be a value and volunteer and add value. And let me tell you, charity is great too. Charity is the number one reason most people will pay attention to you. If you're giving and you're not expecting, yeah. Mr. Schwarzman writes in his book, people will not believe in you. And it's true, people don't want believe in you. Something to keep in mind. People just won't believe in you as an entrepreneur. They just won't. You know, don't be afraid to write and call people you look up to and admire. 
because they might answer back they have for me. You just keep shouting from the rooftops from wherever you can and do whatever you can to get their attention. Eventually the forces out of your control will move out of the way and the people you admire will respond. I got a great story about Bill Ackman. I love Bill Ackman. Bill A is, that's my dude, all right? I followed his career from Harvard back in the 90s. And uh, Bill likes to fish every once in a while. I like to fish every once in a while. So I know him, uh, him and uh, Oliver, one of his guys that worked for him at Pershing Square, uh, built a resort on the Abacos, I believe it was. And I know they like fly fishing and all that. And I love fly fishing. And so uh, I wrote Bill Ackman. I was like, hey, Bill, here's so and so and so. I won't go into specifics of how I did things because it's kind of a secret, secret sauce for me. But six months go by, and I'm sitting in my kitchen one day, and the phone rings about 9 a.m. And I kid you not, I Googled the number really fast because I didn't recognize it. And I saw Pershing Square. I was like, oh shit, that's Bill. And I answered the phone, and it's Bill Ackman. And from then on, I've, I've kind of created a relationship with him. He's an awesome dude. I got nothing but mad respect for Bill. And I just admire the guy because he hasn't, he does not have a 100% win. Uh, he's just the way he operates. And how, look, I had to take an interest because, uh, you know, he's like the baby Buffett, Warren Buffett, okay? And he taught me all about value investing and everything. I mean, you got to get into the weeds on things. People will unfairly judge you, okay? Pe people who will marginalize you, they will ignore you. They will often make fun of you. They'll call you a loser. Even people in your family and around you as an entrepreneur. They will literally... It's sad that I have to say this. People around you will marginalize you as a loser. But you have to keep moving forward. You have to. You have to be your own leader. You have to endure the pain. Like Mr. Schwartzman says, when it comes to marathon runners, you have to keep running through that pain and that wall of pain. It's all mental pain. But as a runner, several weeks go by, you keep running and running and running and training and training, and boom, you bust through that wall. And your body starts responding, and you're able to handle that pain more easily, and then things get easier as you run. Trust me, I started running marathons earlier last year, and you know what I did? I found out I had a folate deficiency. I wasn't progressing like I should have been, but I kept hitting that wall of pain again and again and again. And then I finally went to the doctor because I've had nutritional deficiencies uh, because of my gut, my gut health. Uh, I have a B12 deficiency, now I have a folate deficiency. And long story short, found out the problem. Now I'm through that, through that wall of pain. And I just did a, a 13 mile or half marathon up literally a mountain here in the desert in Arizona this weekend. It was my personal best. I'm very proud of it, just incredible. Now my toe, has got a problem. If you're really committed, you gotta bust through that wall of pain. It's gonna be there. And that's what limits a lot of people. People are gonna reject you. That's another lesson. People are going to reject you. People will lie to you. Okay, this is a big one. People will lie to you. It doesn't matter if you're trying to go out there and get a job. Maybe you want a partnership. You know, whatever. You approach people you don't know, they're often gonna lie to you. Um, People won't take it seriously. Uh, they will likely want to see you fail as entertainment. I've seen several people in the private equity industry in Kansas City uh, I've contacted. They want to see me fail. And you know what? A lot of people out there will, who are employees, they're not entrepreneurs, they want to see you fail. Support people who are doing incredibly hard stuff. Trust me on that, really. People will play games with you, too. It's crazy. People will play games with you, too. It's the damnest thing. And that's infuriating. But you got to forgive and keep moving on. You just got to, man. Uh, make sure, make sure 
you don't give anybody the opportunity to play games with you. Hold people accountable. Be gentle, be nice, but hold people accountable for their words. Uh, there will be times when you just find it impossible to move forward, but you have to. But you have to. Be unapologetic. Be, just be fearless. You have to be unapologetic in your mission. And be fearless. Be persistent. This is what's coming out of Mr. Schwarzman's book. And these are values I hold tight to me. They see me out here doing big things. And, and, and you know, people starting to take an interest in me. I'm starting to get haters. People play games with you, man. You gotta forgive them and just keep moving forward. Mr. Schwarzman was the same way. He had people not want to be associated with him anymore and he's building Blackstone. I just get it. I mean, Mr. Schwarzman gets it. And go look at his talks online. Read his book. I'm telling you. It really helps. Right. Mr. Schwarzman ran marathons too. He did it because he wanted to see if he could bust through that wall of pain, and he did. And that's, I had a couple reasons for wanting to do it on my end too. Mr. Schwarzman gets it. Gets it. Thank you so much. That's all I got. Until next time. We'll see you there. Have a good one.